Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Henry Berman, CEO of the Association of Small Foundations, which provides resources and a voice to over 2,500 small staffed foundations across the United States. Henry has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Henry, for joining us today. Delighted to be here. Thank you. Small staffed foundations provide such a large impact and at a, at a very modest operating base. Talk about what a small staff foundation is and, and talk about how your organization assists these foundations in, in their work. Absolutely. What, what makes our members, and I would, I would suggest all small staff foundations, whether they're part of our organization or not, um, special, is that they, they tend to be very obviously small staffed, which means they're nimble, they're agile, they're responsive, they're rooted in their communities, they have their feet on the ground. Perhaps most importantly, they're truly passionate about what their, what their chosen field is, what their, or fields sometimes, for their giving. And as an organization, we're very non-prescriptive about what they give. If we, if we take my personal feelings aside as Henry, I don't really care if they give to the symphony or the soup kitchen. What I care about is that they're doing it in a thoughtful manner, they're doing it with intention, they're having the impact they want, and they're not simply just writing a check and saying, here it is. Because they're small and in their communities, they're aware of what's going on, and they're able to, to really make a difference within their chosen giving area. And when, when I say communities, um, certainly we're talking geographically in many cases, but a lot of our members fund with a national footprint or even internationally. So we should look at communities or think about communities also as I'm giving in health care. That's a community. So I may live in Kansas, but I may well be funding cancer research that's going on at major universities or medical centers in Boston, New York. Minneapolis, whatever. So there's, there's two ways to think of, of communities. And these, uh, these individuals who belong to these foundations develop considerable expertise in their particular area. They, they really do, and, and I like to say that they become informed consumers. So um, not only am I the CEO at ASF, I'm still a trustee of a small staffed foundation. Family friend set this up before her death. I'm part of the, one of the trustees. And over time, we honed our focus. So for several years, we have a really pinpointed interest. So what it means is we've become informed consumers. I'm learning that field so that I'm really able to start to, to frankly, discriminate in my choices of giving. Um, one of my favorite stories is we funded an organization one year, and I'm being purposely vague, <laughs> we funded an organization one year. It, they did a pretty good job. Right. Normally, I would turn around and fund them again. When they came back for a second year of funding, we chose not to because we found a, a different organization serving literally the same geographic cohort of kids mm -hmm. and said, they're doing a better job. They, they're, what they're doing is going to have a ripple effect and will last for years. So it didn't mean the first one was bad. But it meant that because I understood this field better and better, I was able to realize these guys do a better job. And that's true for many of our members. They really become experts while at the same time recognizing that the people running the nonprofits, generalizing here, but for the most part, they're the real experts. And I think one of the keys to good giving is recognizing that and partnering with them. If it's just a check, um, it's just a check. The, the real thrill, the real excitement is the, the grant making that goes beyond the checkbook. And that's another thing a lot of our members do because they are in the community. They roll up their sleeves and they work hand in hand with these nonprofits, which benefits the nonprofit beyond just dollars, but it also allows the funder to better understand the real needs of that organization and how they can help. So it's, it's truly, to use the cliche, a win-win situation. And it's not unidir unidirectional. It's not a, a donor, a uh, small foundation um, giving a check and an organization receiving it. There is a exchange of knowledge. The donor benefits from learning, um, but the 
um, the receiving organization may also benefit from guidance and from from their own learning that could cause them to shift their operations as well. Absolutely, and that's uh, I have a friend at, at Harvard who's coined the term, written a paper about what he calls the virtuous cycle of giving. And it's essentially what you just talked about, that it goes around and around and it becomes, uh, you know, actually it picks up momentum it, and, and the nonprofit is the one that wins. And I think it, one of the reasons it works is, um, let's pick an area of funding, um, environmental issues. Okay. Uh, I'm the funder and I'm working with you as the nonprofit. And since I'm going beyond the check and I'm working hand in hand with you, the, the real winner in that um, example becomes the environment. If we're trying to save the wetlands in your town or a land trust or whatever, th that's an inanimate object, maybe not the best choice. Say we've been funding, funding education. It's the kids who truly benefit. And as a funder, you as the nonprofit, that's our real interest is the kids. Right. In terms of, of the example that, that you're providing of, of investing in a, an organization that is more effective and deciding that another organization that is also doing good work is less effective, you're also communicating something to the market. You're allowing market forces to affect the success or lack thereof of an organization. You are tilting the table in a sense but you're tilting a table in response to your judgment of where the dollar is going to get the best return in terms of social impact. So it, it, in a real sense, you're, you're part of that marketplace of, of ideas. Um, that do, that do, you, you're not allowing people to be immunized from market forces in that, in that it, sense. You're absolutely right. And I think oftentimes in the nonprofit world, um, using business terms or business models is somehow considered bad. Mm -hmm. um, but it really is a business environment. There's sort of the same free market forces. Um, I should not fund a nonprofit that's not run well and doing good work. Or you should not fund, in your case, you should not fund an organization that might be doing good work but, not, but is not doing as good work as an alternative that is doing the same but better work. Absolutely, absolutely, and I think um, the, the light bulb went off for me um, end of 2008, early 2009, after the, the market really tanked. Right. And I heard many people talking about if we don't fund this nonprofit or that nonprofit, they may go out of business or they may be laying people off. And, and I, was, I was buying into that way of thinking. I'll, I'll admit that. And then suddenly the light bulb went off and I realized I was less left as a foundation trustee um, to steward someone's money for the benefit of children in our case. My interest was the children. Right. And I had to find the best investment where I got the best return, so it's not dividends but it's social capital, best return for those children. And, and then it made, that was, a, that was a watershed moment for me because it became easier to turn down nonprofits. Um, are, are you happy if somebody goes out of business? Certainly not. If you're happy, are you happy if somebody has to get laid off? Obviously not. But I was left with a responsibility um, to benefit those children. And it, you know, to put it in business terms, um, my stockholder, if you will, although she was no longer living, I had an obligation to maximize her investment. Well, you also have as, have as a funder, it's not, it's not as if you can always do both, right? Somebody is going to win and somebody is going to lose. So the basis of that is so important. How do you evaluate the basis of that? How do you help uh, your members to evaluate um, the, the success of their various uh, um, uh, grantees. We've been doing a lot of work the last few years around impact and helping our members understand what they want their impact to be, how they want it, how, how they want to see it. There's no one size fits all, right. um, neither for the funder nor for the recipient. You can't just pull out a checklist and say they did A, B, C, D, E. It's not as simple as a rubric in that in that regard. Um, so I think for everybody, it's a little bit different, but it starts with the 
foundation, or let's even just say the funder, because I think this is fundamental to anybody, whether you're writing um, checks at your kitchen table or you're taking your money from a donor advised fund or from a trust or whatever. Um, it's understanding what you want your money to do. What, what, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to help kids to read? Are you trying to cut down on, on incidents of uh, diabetes? Are you helping trying to uh, feed the homeless, save the wetlands, whatever? What, what do you want that impact to be? And then you have to look at what you're doing and recognize how you're going to measure that. What's your measure of success? I mean, it's, it's, again, it holds up very much to a business. Um, you sit in the boardroom at the, the start of the year, and I'm simplifying this, but we want to sell so many widgets this year. We want to achieve A or B. You have to go in and look at it. You don't always achieve that, but then it becomes incumbent upon you, why didn't I? It's not a failure if you didn't. It's an opportunity to learn. Maybe there were extenuating circumstances that caused it not to happen. Well, the, this is exactly the way we conduct our, our searches. We, we uh, query what, what success looks like in three, five, ten years. And then we look at how different people, different constituents might view that success. And then we, we develop different profiles to, um, to explore um, people uh, to engage people who have delivered that success in, in different ways. What you're saying is that you do the same thing with your, uh, with your members. Or you help your, your members do that with their uh, grantees. Absolutely, and, and the key word in that paragraph that you just, you just said was um, different. So there's, there's different criteria for everyone. Right. So this, the, the, the organization that I chose not to fund because I believed you know, organization B was doing it better, somebody else may see it differently. Right. Somebody else may look at organization in A and say, no, they're really hitting exactly what I and want. And equally valid. Equal, absolutely. That's, the, that's what's really important, um, that everybody has, brings their own perspective to the table in that regard. What other functions do you exercise for your members? Are you a, are you a knowledge clearinghouse as well? We, um, we do, I think you could probably put it into three large uh, lines of work, mm -hmm. if I can use that term. One is we, we, we guide them, and we, we particularly, I particularly don't say we educate them, because I want you to think about a guide on a trail walking through the woods. Sometimes they're out in front of you, leading. Right. Sometimes they're at the back, picking up stragglers and pushing you. Sometimes they're right in the middle of the pack. So again, we, we try and meet our members where they are. So we provide all kinds of guidance, whether it's seminars, webinars, yeah, everything you might imagine, right. uh, printed material, to help them be better at what they do. Right. Um, the second one is um, we connect them. Remember, these are all, for the most part, um, individuals or very small staffs. Many of them work alone. Right. So what we do is provide a network for them. Sometimes it's realizing, wow, there's other people in town here who are doing this. Let's go meet for coffee and share our, our, our successes and our questions. Other times it's we want to connect people who are, uh, that want to be connected with other people funding in a particular area. So that might be a regional um, uh, grouping, but there also might be people who are passionate about children or the arts or about the environment or about uh, justice or poverty or homelessness and and you will connect those people we will together. we will we will do our best to connect them um, we also I often use Nordstrom's as a model of how I like to think we operate which is we've got terrific products and I'm using products in the very broadest sense of the word which includes staff who are mm -hmm. our best product and have the most knowledge we've got terrific products on our shelf and we can help you find the product. If we don't have it, we know where to help you get it. And because we're so good at what we do, and have such confidence in it, I have no problem saying to you, gee, you're really interested in this. There's another affinity group that only deals with uh, geriatric education. Let's connect you with them because they're gonna help you in ways we can't. There's right. too many of those vertical slices of the marketplace for funding for us to provide that. And there's wonderful affinity groups that do. More, our stuff tends to be more horizontal. How do you know if you're having impact? Right. Um, 
how do you identify a good nonprofit? How do you recognize good leadership? Those kinds of things that you can then nuance for your particular area. So there's a lot of connecting that way, but also connecting members with what's going on in the world. Uh, I'd like to think of us as sort of their radar screen, seeing what's out there and um, is, it, is, it, is it a developing force? For example, what are the trends for large and small foundations and where you can have the most impact and a unique impact? Absolutely. We, we work with a number of organizations where um, a relatively small foundation can have an enormous impact uh, if they're targeted and if they work within a community of, of that particular need, they can, they can make the difference. Um, and we see that in the establishment of small museums, we see that in the establishment of uh, programs for foster care youth, uh, we see that in educational uh, areas. Those strategies are sometimes so important to the satisfaction, ultimately, of the donor and the impact that the donor can have. When you write a check of, of, of a certain amount, it could just be lost in the shuffle of a large organization in a smaller environment. It could, ha it could mean the difference between um, a, a child's future and, uh, in, in poverty or a child's future as a self-sustaining uh, member of the community. You're, you're exactly right. I mean, I uh, have, have given talks or been in classes and people will talk on the fundraising side and they'll talk about major gifts and of course the question is, well, what's a major gift? Right. Well, a major gift at, at um, Harvard University or Yale or whatnot is a very different dollar figure than a major gift at the local soup kitchen. Um, and I'd argue that that soup kitchen gift, which is probably has a whole lot fewer zeros on it, can be more impactful than the large gift to the large university um, in terms of, of how it really impacts that organization and makes a difference. Um, so there's guiding, there's connecting, and the third one, which is really, I think, the most exciting, is really being a, a, a champion for these people, our members, who tend to be very humble. Mm -hmm. you, you're unlikely to find them, um, I'll show my age and say above the fold in the newspaper, <laughs> um, but you're unlikely to see them publicized in that regard. They tend to go in, they do their work, they make a big difference. So one of our jobs is to tell the world about them um, because the, the connecting the dots on that allows them to be better leaders in their community. Yes. And um, one of my favorite expressions is that I talk about our members within their communities are Bill Gates. And what do I mean? Well, Bill Gates can pick up the phone and he can talk to the president, he can talk to a prime minister, um, he can open doors. But in your, in your community, as this small foundation leader, you can pick up the phone and get the superintendent of schools, the mayor, maybe the, you know, the plant manager or the, the store manager at the you know, giant Walmart or Home Depot or whatever. Um, you can bring them all together and say, we have a problem in town here with, with teenage youth. Uh, the foundation has some money to put towards that, but it's not just about money. We have to work together. And what our members often do is take that leadership role and be the catalyst, which again is that going beyond the check right. sort of thing. If it was just a matter of writing checks, um, I think it would be much less effective, certainly be a lot less fun. And, um, and so this, this, this leadership aspect of helping our members be better leaders is just, is just key, I think, to, to, to helping the entire nonprofit sector. What's next for the Association of Small Foundations? Are you, are you interested in, in uh, expanding your membership? Are you interested in, in deepening your services? Um, I think both. I'm mean, certainly interested in you know, pragmatically, mm -hmm. absolutely. But I think we, we offer so much to help people be better philanthropists. And yeah, I often talk about our members as small staffed philanthropists rather than necessarily small staffed foundations. I think there's lots of people that we can help be better at what they do. And because, as I said, you know, we're, we're non-prescriptive, we, we, don't, we don't tell them what to fund. Um, I think it makes it easy for people to come and, and be part of this and be better at what they do. And that's ultimately it, because if we do that, the entire community in the sense of society benefits because these people are making differences all over the country.
and the world. Well, Henry Berman, thank you so much for sharing with us uh, the work of the Association of Small Foundations, and thank you so much for your insights. Thanks for allowing me to do that. <laughs>